Hi, and welcome to the ninth session in our series, Conversation Analysis and Healthcare Interactions. Today, we're going to take a look at the concept of repair. Before we get started, here are the articles that we're going to be using for today's session and the later discussion. For today, we're going to examine the core topic of repair in social interactions. By the end of today's session, you should be able to understand the organization of repair sequences. You should be able to identify the ways that repair can be initiated and resolved. And you'll also be able to describe some of the functions of repair sequences. In our later discussion session, we'll have a chance to discuss and address our key questions. And during the live discussion, participation will always be welcome and encouraged, but will always remain voluntary. The option to skip your turn will always remain a valid choice. And don't forget, having your PDFs available for this and the live session will always be useful. Now, before we move on, let's quickly look back with a recap of what we covered in our last session. First of all, we looked at preference organisation within social interaction. We identified some social practices that related to the organisation of preference. And we outlined some of the complexities and limitations currently surrounding this topic. Today, we're examining repair. Now, one way of thinking about CA is that it's a systems level approach to the study of social interaction. It includes systems such as turn design, turn taking, sequence organization, and so on. In this respect, repair relates to when these systems go wrong, and it can be considered as the problem solver or conversational troubleshooter. The concept of repair was first described by Shegloff, Jefferson and Sachs in 1977, where they noted that there was an overwhelming preference for self-correction. And this is an important system. In social interaction, there exists a preference for interactions to move forward with minimum disruption. This is what Shegloff described as a preference for progressivity. And this is important because repair initiations inevitably disrupt the progressivity of an interaction in progress. And repair can arise from several trouble sources, such as clarity, premise, understanding, hearing, and so on. While repair can be regarded as the problem-solving system in social interaction, it can represent an inevitable threat to how these interactions unfold. As we've outlined in earlier sessions, interactions are sequentially organized from the micro to the macro level. There is order at all points in social interactions. From the order of each syllable, the order in each turn constructional unit, and the turns that comprise multiple TCUs, and action sequences, each element is sequentially organized insofar as one part comes next after the previous part. Now this is important for progressivity in social interaction, where there is a socially organized preference to move forward with minimum disruption or repetition. And this is why repair can be something of a delicate matter. In its initiation, Repair introduces an inevitable disruption to progressivity of interactions. And repairs are typically salient in the unfolding interaction. Whenever repair is initiated, whatever was taking place is usually suspended until the repair is addressed and ideally resolved. And this delicacy can sometimes be discerned in the manner in which repairs are initiated and accomplished, as we'll hopefully see shortly. So, let's take a look at how repairs can take place in everyday social interactions. In short, repair and the opportunity for repair can take place anywhere, 
And this is because trouble sources themselves can arise anywhere. The trouble source can arise at any point within a turn in progress. The trouble can also be elucidated in the next turn at talk. Or it may well become clear later in a sequence, but typically not too far removed without sounding odd. There are three typical components for a repair sequence. The production of a trouble source, bringing the trouble to attention, and resolving the problem that has arisen. And repair, depending on its configuration, is a product of interaction, with work divided between participants, depending on the repair type. Now, when it comes to initiating repair, there are three key opportunity spaces within a given sequence. In first position, a participant can both initiate and provide a repair solution. This can happen within the turn or at the end of the turn. This can be projected by word cutoffs, hasty word replacements, reformulations, hitches, hesitance markers, aborts, and restarts. These are all markers of trouble sources and repair initiations. In second position, this would be classed as an other initiated repair. This takes place in the next turn after a trouble source, which is either projectable or only hearable after the repair initiation. This initiation can offer an opportunity space for the producer of the trouble source to either self-repair, or it can offer a candidate solution, or it can offer a solution directly. Then there is the third position. This form of initiation takes place a little after the next turn from the trouble source, but not too far without sounding somewhat unusual. In terms of frequency, self-repair is by far the most frequent form of repair, which supports Shegloff and colleagues' initial observation that there is a socially organized preference for self-repair. In this, other initiated repairs are regularly performed as if they were dispreferred actions with some kind of delay from the trouble source and a form of downgraded or mitigated repair solution. As I'd mentioned, in repair initiations, there is this socially organized preference for the person who produces the trouble source to be the one who initiates repair and resolves it. This is the preference for self-correction. In terms of social desirability, it's evident that there is an order of preference in types of repair sequences that's based on the division of labor in these repair sequences. First, there's self-initiation, self-repair. In this sequence, the producer of the trouble source both identifies and addresses it. Then, there's other initiated, self-repair. In this sequence, the other participant is the one who flags the trouble source while affording an opportunity for the person who produced it to offer a repair solution. There's also self-initiated other repair. In this, the producer of the trouble source flags the trouble while constructing an opportunity space where the other participants can offer a repair solution. And finally, there is other initiated other repair, which is considered to be the strongest form of repair, where the other participant both flags the trouble source and provides the repair solution. And these sequences can vary in the extent to which they disrupt progressivity. Likewise, they vary in the extent to which they can pose a threat to ongoing social solidarity in the unfolding interaction, which is why there's a form of preference organization relating to the initiation and resolving of repair sequences. Here's an example of self-initiated self-repair. The current speaker, during a turn in progress, places on hold 
the progression of their own turn to address a trouble source in this turn at talk. In this example, it's in the repair solution that we see the apparent problem with the initial formulation. In the turn, the initial formulation of fixed up on a date is not erroneous as such, but the insertion of blind is an on-the-fly self-correction that fine-tunes this turn in progress with minimal disruption to the progressivity of this sequence. This is an example of an other initiated self-repair sequence. The trouble source is on line one, but this only becomes apparent in line three. In line three, the repair initiator is an insert sequence that looks back at the initiating turn, marking it as inadequate for full understanding. This form of repair initiation invites the producer of the trouble source to offer a repair solution. And the sequential organization here offers a glimpse into the preference organization of such a sequence, as there is a delay between the trouble source and the repair initiator, which is not uncommon for this type of repair. This is an example of self-initiated other repair. In this sequence, the trouble is produced on line five when participant A is unable to locate the surname of Helen. It's on line eight that the other participant offers a repair solution after a one second gap. And it's on line nine that the repair solution is acknowledged and this particular sequence is closed. And then we have an example of an other initiated, other repair sequence, otherwise known as a correction. In this example, Ben invites Ellen to listen to pigeons. After a gap of 0 0.7 seconds, Bill's turn can be seen to flag the trouble source of Ben's invitation while offering a repair solution. And it's worth noting that in addition to the 0 0.7 second gap that Bill tags on a downgrade that mitigates the repair initiation. Quail, I think. Based on the transcription, the prosodic features also include an upward intonation on quail and a downward intonation on think. And that would make the initiation hearable as somewhat mitigated. Looking more closely at other initiated repairs, it's evident that other initiated repair can do more than flag a trouble source. These initiations can convey accountability or responsibility for the trouble. In the case of self-repair, it's quite straightforward. The producer of the trouble attends to it and offers a conversational course correction. Now, it would be intuitive to assume that the producer of the trouble source is typically held responsible, but this is not always the case. And what has been found is that the way that an other initiated repair is produced and how it's responded to can convey responsibility for the trouble source. When it comes to trouble sources and resolutions, there are several possible reasons why a turn might be problematic. And these can be projected in the repair initiation. Trouble sources include problems with clarity, premise, formulations, understanding, and so on. Repair initiations can have implications for the impression of who is responsible for the trouble source. And this includes open class repair initiators, such as, huh? As such, other initiated repair can be seen as requiring management to clarify the assignment of trouble responsibility. This is an example of an other initiated repair. The trouble source is produced on line one. However, this is not clear until the production of line two. In line two, 
The single lexical item makes salient the trouble source, with the prosodic cues offering a clear indication as to the location of the trouble. The turn also offers an opportunity space for Ken to correct the course. In line three, Ken provides the repair solution on cue and tags on an apology, acknowledging their responsibility for the trouble source. In keeping with the drive of social solidarity, Al offers a somewhat reconciliatory turn on line four. Now this repair could have been stronger with a simple modulation of the final unit intonation. Had this been a downward final unit intonation on line two, it's likely that this would have been heard as a straight correction. So when it comes to other initiated repairs, there is evidently work to be done in managing the trouble responsibility. For example, in apology-based repairs, the embedded apology projects that the person initiating repair bears responsibility for its production. This can be seen as a prospective apology that relates to the incoming repair initiation. In this respect, the apology indexes the potential offence of having to initiate repair. For example, I'm sorry, what? conveys that the responsibility lies with the person initiating repair. Without the apology, this relatively open class repair initiator of what could project trouble understanding or hearing. The apology, however, indexes that a particular issue is located with the producer of the repair initiator and not the producer of the trouble source. In keeping with the next turn proof of procedure, the evidence for this relates to how the repair is resolved. For an apology-based other initiated repair, this typically leads to a straight repetition of the initiating turn. However, in the case of a non-apology-based open class repair initiator such as huh or what, this can convey that the responsibility lies with the producer of the trouble source. So for example, a standalone what can be understood as attributing responsibility of the trouble source to the person producing the turn that resulted in this interactional trouble. And in this respect, the next turn also offers evidence for this, where the repair solution typically results in a reformulation or an offer of an account for the problematic turn at talk. So now we're going to take a look at how the concept of repair has been applied to healthcare settings. Specifically, this paper examines how repair is used to establish mutual understandings during psychiatric consultations in the context of schizophrenia. The paper examined how repair sequences might relate to the therapeutic relationship during these encounters. The paper noted that while self-repair was the dominant form of repair in these encounters, patients self-repaired more than psychiatrists. Additionally, psychiatrists used other initiated repair more than patients. In these encounters, patients typically initiated repair in order to clarify life world concerns such as their experiences of hearing voices, while psychiatrists typically used repair in order to clarify more biomedical concerns. In this example of a patient repair initiation, the patient is describing life world concerns in their turn. Throughout the turn, there are several position one repairs that make the turn somewhat fragmented in its production. These initiations are evident through cutoffs, hesitance, reformulations, and false starts. What is important here 
is that the psychiatrist responds in a manner that projects that they have treated the account as adequate before moving on. In this example, we have a psychiatrist repair initiation, which takes place in third position, which is a form of self-repair. The psychiatrist initiates with a question relating to the amount of medication the patient is currently taking. Now, this question presupposes that the patient is taking the medication through the design of the question. The turn component, how many, accomplishes this presupposition. The patient responds in a manner that rejects the supposition, noting that they didn't take any this morning, which re-specifies the question to just this morning. And in third position, the psychiatrist self-repairs the trouble source on line one with a reformulation. However, I'd like you to consider an alternative reading to the sequence, which we might discuss in our live session. And with that, here are the key questions that we'll address in that live session. Thanks for watching.